In the first five weeks of the iRacing Drivers' Championship, it has shown no signs of emulating its road racing cousin, while Gregor Hutu has shown absolute dominance on the road courses by taking every pole and winning every race, the Oval Racing Series has seen nothing short of amazing developments both on and off the track. In the first five weeks, we've had no less than five different winners. Week one saw NASCAR's native son and probably iRacing's most famous member, Dale Earnhardt Jr., win in Daytona, sparking speculation that the real-life NASCAR driver could take this series in a cakewalk. For two weeks later, Sandy Banerjee came from nowhere to win from 26 in Las Vegas. Our next race in Bristol saw the dominance of the British racing driver Richard Towler as the top competitor in both road and oval series. He then would show that he's the man to beat currently, as he currently sits on top of the point standings over Mr. Consistency, Thomas Hazard. But even after showing the same dominance in the next two races at Martinsville and Phoenix, Richard Taller was denied the victory by a push in the back from Ray Alfala at Martinsville and a DNF in Phoenix. With a little controversy between then and, then and now regarding last week's results, round six brings us to the mighty Talladega, a 2.66-mile super speedway that creates racing like no other, where it's not what you know, it's who you know, and that will carry you to the front. Stay tuned as the best sim racers in the world compete for NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship at Talladega Speedway tonight here on PSR TV. Once again, I'm joined in the booth by my esteemed colleagues, Nim Cross and Chuck Johnson. I'm Tom Beatty. Guys, uh, we're now away from the smaller tracks and start the bigger tracks, given the history of these drivers. Can Richard Towler come from the back? Can these guys really make a good show out of this? Any one of these drivers can win this race. Uh, the, the, the restrictor plate allows for uh, a very close racing, and it is a chess game amongst these drivers. It's going to be very exciting because... Even though there are uh, guys like Tyler who have been fast uh, all week long, everybody here has a shot, and there's there's any any chance that anybody these guys any one of these guys can win. Well, I pretty much agree there, Nim. Uh, this is, should be an amazing race. I know these guys if they keep their heads about them, can put on a great show for us tonight. Uh, you have pretty much all of the heavy hitters from this series here tonight at Talladega. And, man, I just can't wait to see what they can do with it, guys. So while we've got this opportunity as these guys roll off the grid, let's run through the qualifying results. Uh, Brad Davies on the pole, uh, 50.987. Thomas Hazard second. Thomas Hazard's a model of consistency in this series. Josh Berry in third. Derek Wood uh, in fourth place. Josh Parker in fifth place. Uh Coming up in sixth, the real life, another real life driver, Daniel Pope, Daniel Pope the second in sixth, Thomas Lewandowski in seventh, Jordan Erickson in eighth, uh, John Gorlinski, second place uh, driver last week or two weeks ago in Phoenix in ninth, Jesse Atchison in tenth, uh, points leader Richard Taller in eleventh. Pretty poor qualifying, uh, considering what he's done so far this series uh, at a 51.10 from Richard Taller. Patrick Fogel in 12th, Dale Earnhardt Jr. 13th, Jordan Hightower 14th, John Prather 15th, Brian Schoenberg 16th, Harrison Wildlitz in 17th, Chris Main 18th, Ray Alfala, the winner, back in Martinsville in 19th, Florian Goddard in 20th. That'll run down our top 20 qualifiers as they begin to come into turn uh, three uh, in Talladega. Guys, let's bring it to the green flag. Yeah, they're in uh, corner number three right now. Uh, getting ready to get started. The biggest, the biggest things these drivers are worried about right now is obviously, you know, trying to get to the front when everybody is in a very equal car. Uh, although they are, they have worked on their own setups. But the biggest thing that these guys want to do is also survive. Uh, one mistake by any one of these drivers can take out a great majority of the field. And uh, as just like in a real life counterpart, in this race we can have the big one. And everybody wants to avoid it, but just the tiniest mistake could, that could happen. So these guys are going to group up. 
a group uh, as the Pontiac Paul Solstice pace car dives into the pit lane. These guys are going to start uh, spooling up their speed on these plate engines. Brad Davies leads them down to the line and get the green flag here. So the start-finish line is further on down at the end of the D-shaped oval that Talladega is, 2.66 mi miles. And just like any pl good plate race, these guys are slow to get going. Yeah, like it, it takes them a good lap to bring these cars up to speed, just as the real-world counterparts. But uh, Brad Davies out there front, Derek Woods, uh, finds himself on an opening and fits down into that lower line, and he looks like he's running third place right now. Pardon me, I'm just trying to get my uh, couple of camera angles all squared away. So it looks like the leader currently is Brad Davies in that Whiskey River Chevrolet on the point at big number four. Second place, Thomas Hazard, Josh Berry in third. Let's see what timing is going. He's going to put them as they cross the start finish line. They make their way back across the stripe here. Yeah, one thing you want to be Barry careful of is as the, as one of the drivers back there uh, gets a little bit on the apron. He gets his two wheels on the apron, and that could unsettle the car right now. Tom Landau Thomas Lewandowski had a problem with that going through the trial right now, but he's able to gather it back up. Everything is fine. Right now, 37 cars in that front draft, and it's about uh, a little over two and a half seconds, maybe three seconds, to that uh, 35th place car. So as these cars begin to group up into their little drafting group, Brad Davies still out on the point in the number four car. Number three, Josh Berry in second place. Derek Wood in third. Josh Parker in fourth. Thomas Hazard in fifth. Daniel I'm expecting sixth spot right now. Thomas Lewandowski seventh. Er Jordan Erickson eighth. John Gorlinski ninth. And rounding out the top ten is Richard Taller as they cross the line on lap number three. So I expect these guys to be fairly patient here. Hopefully this is a... Uh, not going to be as pressing of an issue, even though this technically is a shorter race than they've had in the past. This is a 90-lap race. We're now on lap, uh, making lap three. I hope that these guys will be a little more patient and find their zone uh, till the end of this race, because we've had, you know, some 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 uh, some plagued yellow flags at the end of these races in the past. So I hope that this super speedway is going to allow these guys to sort of really uh, get into the zone and work their way up to the front. Well, even though this is a super speedway race, they are racing very close to each other. So the danger of uh, anything uh, that can happen is there. Right now, the outside line being pulled by Josh Berry. Those guys are drafting right nose to tail, uh, very close together. And uh, they have to do that to be able to make that outside line work, which they are doing right now. And there, this is a two-groove racetrack. This is modeled as a two-groove racetrack. So it's, it's, it's very important that you be really steady on that outside line if you maintain uh, contact with the leaders. Yeah, I made a mistake. That's uh, Thomas Hazard up there on the outside line. Uh, Barry's in the three car down the inside. Those cars are painted kind of similar. It got them confused a little bit. But that outside line, now has about 15 cars in it. It's working pretty good. And they're coming up to challenge uh, the leader uh, and for the top spot. And that'd be Brad Davis. And I've got to tell you, it's not easy to stay in the draft in these cars. Uh, you get really close to them. It's, it's really difficult to tell. And as I probably am... Uh, uh, a little too loud in the microphone there as far as the car noise. It, it, it's hard to maintain a steady hand as you're right behind the car. wants to zigzag a little bit and doesn't want to get right up in there uh, as, as, as smooth as you would like it to be. Uh, it, it's hard to change. it's hard to keep your line. It's hard to see. They got those big wings in the back there. Uh, they're trying to look you know look through the cars in front of them. Uh, you know you're in a train and it's just like you're right up uh, on a truck right in front of you. You can't see around you, and you're just trying you're just trusting in those drivers in front of you and behind you to uh, you know do the right things. And, uh, and everybody's racing so close, and just the tiniest mistake can can uh, you know send send the big wreck happen. But that's part of it. You got to survive all of that, and that's you know why we run the run the distance uh, from 100 you know from the start to the end and you got to survive all these different challenges throughout the race as we continue to watch the uh, two trains of cars there one of them led by Brad Davies the other one led by Thomas Havard, Hazard it looks like we got a little three rod three wide racing going on in the back a couple of cars really really high up against the wall let's see if we can find out who those guys are looks like the car number 
uh, the, the 24 car and the 10 car. That's uh, Jason Anderson and Tyler Hudson. Uh, Jason Anderson actually number six uh, in our point standing so far this series. Yeah, it looks like Dale Earnhardt Jr. has moved to that outside lane. He's uh, right behind Patrick Fogel right now. He's trying to get that outside to work. And still that three-wide battle back on the top. They're actually gaining cars for that draft on the, on the way outside line there. So I wonder if these guys have actually teamed up and are going to try and push themselves past uh, guys like Connor McKenzie, guys you can see back there, uh, Connor McKenzie in that bright pink machine. Well, we hear, we hear uh, drivers uh, wondering if, th if three wide thing can happen all the time. Well, here it is, fellas. If you don't think three wide racing can happen around here at Talladega, there you see it up there. And uh, these these guys who are the best that I racing has has to offer is are, they are making it work. So as we continue to uh, ride with the number 12 car of uh, Connor McKenzie, you can see that there are guys up on the outside of him. Uh, Jordan Hightower, I believe. Uh, check that. Who was that? Timing and scoring is almost useless when guys are this close together. Theo Olsen jumping up there on the outside lane. He wants to make that happen. So, yeah, now there's a group of four cars on the outside of Connor. Connor's got to be hating us. Uh, it, it's tough being in the middle uh, when you got so many cars around because you have no escape route. If Theo and tries to force his way back down in the middle lane. Yeah, it looks like Theo Olsen's trying to push himself right between him and, uh, and the number 15 car. He's actually done it. Number 15 car being Darren Stevens. But that leaves the, uh, the number 24 car of uh, Jason Atchison and uh, the number 10 car, Tyler Hudson, out there pushing the three wide. That's Jason Anderson. Check that. Sorry about that. Yeah, the battle up front, up front remaining the same as uh, Thomas Hazard's trying to work that outside lane. Still the, the racing back in the pack. Uh, very interesting. You know, you always see a lot of guys fall to the back trying to, you know, be careful in the race to, to avoid that big wreck. But it looks like the guys in the back right now are feeling the need to get to the front, and they're, they're the ones doing the, the three-wide racing right now. So as we circle around the 10th the, the lap the next time by, let's run through the top 10 here. Looks like Brad Davies is still in the lead, carrying the toe in the line for the inside group of cars. Uh, the number three car of Josh Berry right behind him. Uh, Timing and scoring is showing Thomas Hazard, the number two car, who's on the outside uh, in third place. Uh, Derek Wood, the number nine car, who's third in line on the inside, is in fourth place. Daniel Pope, the second, is in fifth, who is actually, I believe, on the inside line. Yes, he is. On the sixth spot is Josh Parker. Um, seventh is Jordan Erickson. Thomas Landowski is eighth, Patrick Fogel ninth, and John Gorlinski, who is having a little bit of a connection issue, looks like everything's resolved there, is running in the tenth spot. Yeah, Josh Parker, last week's winner at uh, or last race winner in Phoenix. Uh, number eleventh place is Dale Earnhardt Jr. Richard Tower, current points leader, battling for Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. carrying the number one in that Amp Energy car today. Richard Tower in that number thirteen machine. 13th place is Derek Cash. Jesse Atchison is in 14th, and Robert Hall is in 15th. A lot of uh, swapping rounds that they crossed the start-finish line that time. So uh, the list that we were reading just switched over. But right now we have uh, in the next five. We have Josh Prather running, Deanne Vergers, Chris Main, Theo Olson's back there, and Jordan Hightower is being scored in the 20th position right now. It's Darren Stevens. Uh, He's, he's out there working that outside line all by himself. He's trying to trying to make his way up to the field. So as we uh, go back up to the front of the field, it looks like Brad Davies, Josh Berry group, uh, with Derek Wood right there is having a hard time really pulling away from Thomas Hazard. Um, those guys are maintaining some really, really close contact to, to, to get that aero uh, advantage that they need on that outside line. Yeah, everybody here, all these guys have very good setups for this race. Uh, they work very hard at it. And, 
you know they're they're all very good up front here so you see them you know it looks like uh they're they're not moving back and forth too much but that's just because they're all running so flat out so fast that it's very difficult to do the, the outside lane uh the guys out there are doing a very impressive job right now one thing is we're on lap 12 right now so these guys uh have pit stops coming up before you know it and uh probably pit stops be happening somewhere you know between lap 32 to lap 38 something like that these guys will be pitting but we had word that Richard Tower was uh, able to pull a 45 lap practice session. So there's the possibility that these guys can really do a one-stop strategy. And if you get a teammate or if you get a partner with you uh, that'll that'll try and pull that one-stop strategy off with you, you can really have an advantage. Yeah, if they can save their fuel, these guys back in the draft, they might be able to save their fuel uh, to run those those types of distances. And if they can, well, they, they need to make it to uh, you know halfway and they'll be able to make it on a one-stop strategy. And yet it's a super speedway, so anything can happen, and it probably will. So far, I, I'd be the first person to admit that trying to stay tucked into somebody's uh, back bumper like that is a real trick. No matter what controller you have, force feedback or non-force feedback, staying right up with somebody is not only a test of patience, but certainly a test of skill. The outside lane loses a little bit as they round each corner, but they have the momentum down the straightaways where, especially coming through the trioval here, you see Thomas Hazard and Daniel Pope up there on the outside line doing a great job also in there, Jordan Erickson, bumper to bumper. I can't stress to you how hard that is. But the lower, they want to stay down low as they head through one and two here. You want to stay down low to that inside draft, but the lower you get and closer to that inside draft you get, you'll, you'll get a faster run down the straightaway. But the problem with that is, is you're, you're you can cause a wreck by doing it. And, and so it looks like uh, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Richard Towler are side by side in those lines. Actually, it looks like now the number 14 car of John Gorlinski, uh, last week's uh, second place runner at uh, last race, second place runner in Phoenix, are all together right there in the middle of the pack. That's a lot of talent in three little cars. Yeah, so we the uh, word from number the 15 now. Lap times are now at, we hear from uh, Chuck Johnson, uh, lap times are now at 50.6, which is really just a couple of ticks lower than the pole time, which was 50.9. Of course, you know, now that they're running, they have drafting. They didn't have that advantage when they were uh, running for the qualifying session. Yeah, this is one of the few tracks that you will see the the race laps be faster than the qualifying laps, and that's all due to the aerodynamics that are in play here at Talladega. Aerodynamics that are modeled fantastically by iRacing, I must admit. Anybody out there who wants to experience this, this type of racing, this week uh, iRacing is having the, the Talladega races and mirroring the races that you'll see in real life. So you can actually join the service and race uh, in the uh, nationwide uh, type car and the cup car in the 312 mile race or the 499 mile race that will be held at Talladega this weekend. Yep, the uh, uh, Talladega 499 is Saturday, April 24th at 11 a.m. The, uh, uh, the Talladega 312 is the 23rd at 7 p.m. So check iRacing.com for that. I believe there are actually prizes involved with that. Let me see if I can get my hands on that information. Uh, while we're talking about that, just let everybody know also, if you're not a member, there is a special price promotion uh, on the iRacing.com website right now, www.iRacing.com. For new members, they get 50% off a three-month membership fee, and that includes the Talladega Trek. So they are giving away what looks like five $100 gift cards to the NASCAR.com Superstore, uh, a NASCAR Racing Experience gift card, nearly $500 value, uh, and 10 uh, NASCAR Sprint Cup Pit Crew Challenge, five pair NASCAR, sorry, tickets. Sorry, I was trying to read that and think it at the same time. So definitely Lap number 17 in the race here, Brad Davies is up front being pushed very hard by Josh Berry. Uh, Josh Berry in real world is uh, driving Dale Jr.'s uh, late model. So we'll see if these drivers can get hooked up at some point in this race and get teamed up. 
Uh, right now, Thomas Hazard again doing a great job there on the outside line along with Dar uh, Daniel Pope and Jordan Erickson. Uh, you can tell these guys are getting a little bit antsy because the two lines are separating a little bit. There's some a little bit of weaving going back and forth we didn't see in the first couple laps. So guys are trying to uh, move around and see what they can make happen and see if they can't get to the front. The guys in the back, they don't want to be back there. The guys, Especially the guys in the middle don't want to be in the middle. They want to be up front as Wood slips up the track a little bit, gets very close to Daniel Pope right there in corner number three, almost in contact. One more note on that uh, thought about Josh Berry. He finished ninth at uh, the Motor Mile Speedway uh, this past weekend, started 15th. So nice job for him on that. Not a bad run. And at, uh, Daniel Pope, uh, Daniel Pope III actually finished 10th in that race as well. So as we continue around on lap number 20, as they cross the start-finish line uh, the next time by, uh, Brad Davies is still being scored on the point in the lead. Uh, Josh Berry second, Thomas Hazard third, Derek Wood fourth, and Daniel Pope the second, now up to fifth, or at least being scored in fifth as they jump around a little bit. Uh, let's see if we can go back and take a look a little deeper in the field. It doesn't look like we've really had a whole lot of changes right now. I think it's nice to really see these guys be very patient. But like you said, I know that they want to get up front. I just don't think they really want to do it now. Um, Ray Alfala, the winner back in Martinsville, back in 29th. Um, Jason Anderson, who was doing the three-wide thing earlier, now back to 33rd. Looks like he missed the draft or got pushed back somehow. Is now floundering around in the back about two and a half seconds off the lead. Tyler Hudson's back there. He's trying to make a three wide. He's trying to find some way to get up the front. Uh, Thomas Hazard up front uh, on the outside lane. Uh, they're doing a good job. They were able to actually get up beside Davies on the last lap. Daniel, that might be due to a lot of the line that Daniel Pope is running. Daniel is up there on the outside. And if you noticed on the last lap going through one and two, he moved very wide. And that was to get a run actually a little bit on uh, Hazard, the car in front of him, and maybe to get some, some bump drafting going on. Yes, these cars do bump draft. Uh, down the straightaway to try to get them a run. You don't want to uh, bump draft in the corners because that'll that'll result in a big mess. But uh, definitely do some bump drafting on the straightaways here. And as we watch Tyler Hudson, the number 10 car, that bright yellow car, uh, yellow and black car, trying to get around the outside of the number 22 machine, uh, uh, Vinny Sansoni. Uh, he's out there all by himself and continues to make headway on on uh, on that number 22 car. Looks like he actually has made the pass, so now it looks like he's going to come up uh, behind the number 33 car of Mike Kelly. Looks like he may sure, make sure to look at him as well. Now coming up behind uh, Connor McKenzie in that bright pink number 12 machine. Tyler Hudson doing fairly well out there on his own. Yep, he's got a couple of guys a little bit further back there trying to group up with him right now. But that, that third, you know, you think uh, when we're talking about Talladega, you think that the outside line and people talk about making the outside line work and how tough it is. Well, these guys are making a third outside line trying to make that work, and that's got to be really tough, but uh, they're doing a really good job of it right now. And there was some worry when this track was first released as to whether that was actually going to work, as whether this two-wide or and technically three-wide racing was going to be uh, modeled properly, and it sure certainly has played out that it's, uh, that it's doing fairly well. As we actually see the number 22 machine of uh, 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 Vinny Sansoni come up behind Tyler Hudson, and now they're technically three-wide again. Yep, also back there is Joel Putty. Joel Putty, uh, the third outside car. He's trying to make that outside line work and, and get up to the front. So these guys back there, they want to make to the front. Probably the best uh, way to do it right now, uh, coming up here soon, is to work on this pit stops. Is we got a three wide coming up in the middle of the pack here, but uh, they, they, they think more wisely of that and they uh, get out of that. But uh, pit stops right now are going to be a big part of changing positions and actually changing the face of this race. Uh, when the pit stops come up, you're going to have uh, some of these guys have partnered up with other drivers. They're going to want to pit at the same time so they can keep that draft on their in lap and out lap. Some of these guys are going to want to pit on their own so they don't have to worry about other cars being around them. And that allows them to get into the pits a lot quicker and get out of the pits a lot quicker. And they think that that might save them some time on the track and they'll be able to pick up a drafting car out in the track. So we'll see what kind of strategies play out as pit stops uh, will be coming up here probably in about uh, 15 to 20 laps. 
one advantage that the real world guys, real world guys, have over the uh, over the sim racing guys is that they don't necessarily have uh, the the ability to to tell their spotter to walk down the way there and and you know make a deal with a car down the way. So they pretty much uh, will probably I would imagine that the chat rooms are fairly or the chat system is fairly well. Uh, lit up with people looking for partners, trying to say, hey, I'm going in, come in with me, let's team up, that kind of thing. So uh, that's something that we as broadcasters don't uh, aren't privy to at this point, but uh, that's one advantage that, that, that they lack. So they really have to sort of time it, and I think they'd probably find a better time is just to wait until leaders, uh, Brad Davies, Josh Berry, and Tom, uh, Thomas Hazard, go in and just follow them and then really make a big uh, group out of it. You know, one thing that when you're in a difficult spot, especially on the outside lanes, when it comes time to pit, if you want to pit, you got to find, you got to work your way to the inside. So, you know, there, there's a tough position there. If you're one of the early cars to pit and you're up on that outside, you got to find a way to get down on that left side so you can get, get on the pit road. But yeah, there's a lot of chatter going on right now. And one thing these guys have to understand is who's being truthful or not, too, because uh, you can say that you're going to pit and, uh, you know, somebody might be pulling your leg a little bit. You know, trying to mess up instead. You say, you gotta be real careful of that too. Yeah, I think I called Crazy Ivans last time at uh, <laughs> at, uh, uh, at Phoenix. So somebody throw a Crazy Ivan and force you down into the pits, or have to make a mistake, or they go into the pits and you think that they're not. All of a sudden, you're out there all alone, and your day is done. You're hung up in the hung up in the wind. These cars going around the track right now through the trial at about 190 mile an hour. Uh, their average lap times uh, be about 50.6, and uh, right now we're or I'm watching uh, on Derek Cash right there. He's currently in the 13th position. He moved up five spots that last lap, four spots from 17th to 13th. So Derek Cash moving his way up a little bit. And so this is a whole different style of race. Uh, they are steep banks. These are 33 degree banks all the way around, except for in the trioval. Um, and so, you know, it's really a test of patience. You are flat out all the time. You're never going to hit the brakes until it's time to pit. It's really nothing but an absolute test of patience. You have to be ready uh, at the drop of a hat to, to, to make a hole or get into a hole as a hole comes by. You really have to move up as we, as, as we let's try and go back up front, Mr. Director. It looks like Daniel Pope uh, sneaks around. Uh, Daniel Pope keeps sticking his nose out a little bit on the number two car. Josh Berry, who's, who's lining up on that second, uh, the leader of that outside road. I think what he's doing there, he's trying to, uh, he's trying to keep a gap without getting out, getting out of the throttle. And he's get, as you get a little bit of a gap there, as you see right now it's about half a car length or so. As you get a little bit of a gap, Daniel will get a, uh, a run down the back straightaway here, and he'll get his nose right up on the bumper of Thomas Hazard as they go down the back straightaway and maybe even give him a little bump as they go down the straightaway. This will give him the, the, the better run. As you see right now going into turn three, they're right up there against each other and uh, that gap is what allows for that and that kind of keeps the the uh, the slinky or the yo-yo effect of uh, these guys uh, going back and forth a little bit. But Daniel Pope is a big part of Thomas Hazard being up there, being able to challenge for that lead right now. And so let's take a couple of minutes uh to talk about the uh, actual series points championship that's going on right now. These guys, of course, are racing for points, and they are points scored 185 for the win, five for the most points, uh, uh, for the most laps led, and five for the uh, for the pole position. Uh, currently at the top of the list, Richard Towler uh, from England carrying the torch for, uh, for Europe as the number one uh, point scorer so far at this series. Thomas Hazard, Mr. Consistency, is in second. Patrick, Patrick Vogel after a good result in Phoenix two weeks ago, jumped up two places to third. Brad Davies jumped up three places to fourth place uh, two weeks ago. Uh, Brian Blackford also snuck up a place uh, to fifth in points overall. Uh, Brad Davies and Brian Blackford, both from Florida. A couple of the people that really did well, Josh Parker, from his for his win, uh, jumped up eight positions to 11th. A couple of sliders, uh, John Prather dropped down seven. Jesse Atchison dropped down third to 16th. Uh, Chris Main had a good jump of eight positions up from 27th to 19th. All these guys are racing for points at the top. Richard Tower, uh, really, while he's stuck back there in uh, in 11th. Oh, we see a wreck. There's a wreck. Looks like Garrett Wood went out and took out. Josh Parker's took out. Took out Josh Parker. Yes, he did. Josh Parker, number 16 car. It looks like Derek Wood just kind of lost it trying to stay right on uh, Josh Berry's bumper. 
Richard Taylor is also involved. Very, very great job. This wreck happened pretty close to the front of the field and only three cars involved. And it doesn't look like we're gonna, it doesn't look like the Sims gonna throw the yellow on this. And what this has done is really uh, put this right in the hands of Brad Davies. There's a single file line now. He doesn't have that double file to worry about. Looks like now with Brad, Josh, Thomas, and uh, Tom Lewandowski, Thomas Hazard and Lewandowski. Yeah, the cars went down to the inside and they were not blocking the track. So it, it the the. Uh, the there was no yellow uh, flown because these guys were off the track. They've really jumped everybody up. Uh, single file up front, and uh, this this will be a big deal. The pit stops coming up. Uh, a lot of these guys who lifted out of the throttle, they're going to want to you know try to get back to that draft and make sure they haven't lost. The junior is taking advantage of this, and he's running up the outside line right now. What's happening here? Yeah, since he's on the outside line and nobody's up there, he may be able to pull himself up a number of spots if Gorlinski's up down there. in front of him. And it looks like Gorlinski's want to uh, has the same idea as Dale Jr. Or Dale Jr. is going to take advantage of Gorlinski being out there. Gorlinski second place two weeks ago in Phoenix. Uh, yeah, and he gets Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the number 27 of Robert Hall, and it looks like the number six car of uh, Theo Olson. They're all going to get on a four car train to try and track down. Try and reel in Brad Davies and Josh Berry up front. Yeah, two guys, Andrew uh, Flash, oh, I'm sorry, Andrew Fash the third, he's back here with uh, Jason Anderson. Those guys lost the draft. They probably lifted because of that wreck. So a lot of these guys, a lot of guys out there uh, lost the draft right now and they're trying to survive and stay on this race. Derek Wood, uh, Josh Parker, and Richard Taller in the biggest trouble. They're out there running separately. Wood and Taller are able to stay on the lead lap. Josh Parker is now two laps down. Uh, he had heavy damage after that incident. Oh, and that's going to be... So, so these guys are hoping for a yellow flag, and it looks like if back up to the front here, number 14 of Gorlinski is with Dale Earnhardt Jr. right on his tail, is going to try and reel in Brad Davies and Josh Berry and get this back to a two wide uh typical two wide talladega race derek woods on pit road trying to get the uh, service for the damage he has and like it doesn't derek look like they're going to the give it to him the uh repair is only minimal here so far in i racing but it looks like he is done for the day and derek wood who had a fantastic showing last uh Last week, finishing or last race, finishing third in Phoenix and currently running seventh in the points championship. He's calling it a day on lap 33. We're getting near the pit window now. Yep, right out front right now, still Brad Davies has led, I believe, every lap to this point. Uh, Josh Berry running second place. He's been uh, on, uh, on Davies' tail the whole race. Thomas Hazard has moved from the outside lane down to the third position, the inside lane. He's probably going to want to stay there until pit stops happen. As I said before, if you're up on the outside lane when those pit stops happen, you might be over in, in, a, in a little bit difficult spot. And I think Thomas realizes that he's going to get down to the inside until we have pit stops uh, right now. And also Lindowski in there, John Gorlinski and Earnhardt Jr. up trying to make the outside line work. Uh, Gorlinski having a little bit of uh, connection issues, so Junior might not want to get so close to him, but it uh, looks like Junior is right on his bumper. And Gorlinski had those same, uh, same little latency issues in uh, Phoenix two weeks ago. As we saw him blink away from time to time. It's one of the pitfalls of sim racing. As we come up on lap 35, Brad Davies, let's run down the order here real quick. Brad Davies in first place, Josh Berry, uh, Winner in Phoenix in second place, Thomas Hazard in third, John Gorlinski in fourth, Thomas Lewandowski in fifth. In sixth spot, you will have uh, actually Dylan Hurt Jr. just moved up to fifth, Lewandowski back to sixth, Robert Hall is in seventh spot right now, Theo Olsen always up there in the eighth spot, Daniel Pope, the second, is in ninth, and Jordan Erickson is running tenth. In eleventh place is uh, Ray Alfala. Patrick Fogel uh, currently running uh, in 12th place, sitting third in the points championship. Uh, Joel Putty in 13th. A far cry better race than he had 
uh, in Phoenix. Joel Putty finishing dead last in Phoenix two weeks ago, so he's got to be happy so far. Uh, Chris Main in 14th, and Mike Kelly rounds out the top 15. And it looks like that outside line is beginning to uh, catch up, if not pass, uh, Brad Davies. Yeah, Earnhardt Jr. Uh, pushing Gorlinski. And Gorlinski actually had a nose out in front of uh, Davies going in the corner number one there. So those guys doing a really good job. Earnhardt Jr. on the outside line running in that fourth spot right now. He's being pushed, uh, I believe, by Robert Hall there on the outside. So all that, the outside, and Theo Olsen right there. Those guys doing a very good job on that outside line right now. So kudos to uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. and the number 27 car, Robert Hall, for noticing that Gorlinski five laps ago or six laps ago that Gorlinski was all by himself out there on the outside and jumped out there, pushed him up there, and thus got themselves uh, up into the into contention for the lead. Dale Earnhardt Jr. was was stuck back there in 11th or 12th uh, earlier. Yeah. And now he's being scored in fourth. Junior saw that uh, opportunity right there, and you can see Junior is making uh, work of uh, the rear bumpy bumper on uh, Gorlinski's car right now. Last time down the back straightaway, he was all over the rear bumper, pushing Gorlinski down the back straightaway, and that's what's making this work. You'll see it here again coming down the back stretch this time. Darren Hart Jr. will be right up on the rear bumper of Gorlinski, pushing him down the back straightaway. There is no space. And there's another push by Dale. Yeah, Dale, you just saw that. I don't know if you saw We're watching it on the rear-facing camera, but Dale Jr. just tagged uh, uh, Gorlinski pretty hard there and pushed him right up next to the number three car, Josh Berry. Uh, Junior, Dale Jr. is so confident in doing uh, this restricted plate race, and just as you see in real life, he is the same way here at iRacing. And, and i got to feel a little bit for John Gorlinski. Oh, John, a very competent driver. He's got he's to gotta know how tough this is. And Gorlinski actually moves over and gets out of the way as uh, maybe Junior uh, they had a little bit of bump there, and Junior might be letting him back in. But uh, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. And it looks like he may get help yet again. It looks like Gorlinski's the uh, luckiest man on the planet right now. The number 36 car of Joel Putty uh, notices that Gorlinski's being hung out there, but that's probably going to be too late because Dale Earnhardt Jr. takes off into the distance trying to catch up with uh, – uh, Robert Hall right on his tail catch up with our leader Brad Davies who so far led from the green flag yeah it's it's tough getting pushed like that because uh, you're so on the edge and, and when somebody's riding your rear bumper like that it, it's very difficult and uh, you know it's just a little touch there like we, we saw get, gets the guy a little bit loose and uh, Gorlinski looks like he got a little bit loose and uh, slid up a little bit I think Junior wanted to let him back down because Junior didn't mean to make that happen but it happened and Gorlinski wasn't able to get back down in time so they had to be safe, and uh, it had to work out the way it did. But uh, uh, those guys are very good drafting. Gorlinski again up on the outside line, making a three wide, uh, trying to get back up to that position. Looks so like how these guys be making pit stops here in about four or five laps, though. How important is it to stay directly behind these guys as they're going down? Because it looks like the it's, what's what's more successful for Brad Davies and Josh Berry and Thomas Hazard is that those guys are able to stay in dead lockstep with each other. What Dale Jr. is having and what Gorlinski was having earlier. Gorlinski had it from Dale Jr., but some of the guys behind him wave around a little bit. Does that really cut down on your on your, uh, uh, on your overall speed? Well, it can, but the guys on the inside lane have a shorter way around the track, so they're just staying in line and, and taking advantage of the draft the best they can. To make that outside line work, the guy that's following the, the, the front car on that outside line actually is a uh, is more important than the guy who is uh, running out front. Uh, the guy following, like you saw when Junior was uh, following that, uh, following Gorlinski, Junior was making it work because he was pushing the lead car. And uh, to do that, he had to get, move over and uh, get a little bit of separation and then make a run at the right points in the track to get that push on the straightaways. And that's how Junior's so smart when he's doing this. He knows where to make the gaps, and he knows where to push those cars. But to make that outside line work, you have to work so much harder than the inside line. The inside line, you just have to stay in line because you're the shortest way around the track. The outside line, you really got to work hard and take a little bit more chances to make that outside line work. And so our pole sitter, Brad Davies, circles around. This is lap number 40, so we are now four nights of the way through the race. 90 laps will be running here tonight for the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. As we see Brad Davies, our pole sitter, out there in front. Josh Berry in second. Thomas Hazard in third. Uh, Thomas Lewandowski in fourth. And then we pick up that second outside line there. Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Robert Hall uh, back inside to Daniel Pope the third and Theo Olson. These guys are really... Uh, pictures of patience to be able to stay stuck behind Brad Davies on that inside line pretty much from the get-go. I've not seen any 
uh, any change in positions. Lots of big changes on the outside line, but it's been really this top four of Davies, Barry Hazard, and Lewandowski solidly from the get to the top of the green flag. Well, especially with uh, Davies and Barry. And, you know, these two guys are going to work together because right now, you know, they're in first and second. And where else do you want to be right now? So they're, they're not going to do it much to change any of that. And, uh, you know, they're just waiting for these next pit stops to come up because they're in perfect position to do what they need to do at this time. Um, everybody behind, uh, they have to work uh, pretty hard at it. Right now, a 36 car uh, on the outside lane doing, doing a really good job out there. Uh, that's Joel Putty. Uh, he's being followed by, uh, looks like Chris Main back there, trying to help him along. And it looks like our Las Vegas winner, Sandy Banerjee, uh, in that number black and white 29 machine trying to come up behind him to give him a push on that outside third line. Sandeep came from deep in the field, 26th place in Las Vegas uh, for a surprise win. Uh, and he was very proud of himself and not, you know, hesitant to mention it out there on the forums. It was a uh, very exciting time for Sandeep. We were all very happy for him. Yeah, yeah Sandeep is very enthusiastic about his race and he loves racing. Uh, especially NASCAR style racing. He loves racing here at iRacing. Sandeep races with us from India. So Sandeep on the other side of the planet right now, taking part in racing with guys from uh, the United States and Europe, and they're racing fender, fender to fender right now from uh, all, all the way on the other side of the world. And that's one of the advantages of iRacing. You get to race people from all over the world. But, you know, there are times of days, uh, you know, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the afternoon, where you'll race a massive contingency of European drivers that will just, you know, really spank you on the road courses. There are times like now in the evenings uh, that the, the oval racers and some of the American racers get out there and really have a good time of it. So uh, uh, iRacing is a whole new level of a sim subscription-based sim experience. If you want to check it out, by all means, go check out iRacing.com. Uh, there are a lot of ways to go about it. You can go road racing uh, with the Skip Barber cars and the Volkswagen TDI cars. Work your way up through Star Mazdas and onto the Delars and race a simulated Indy 500. You can go uh, oval racing like these guys chose to do. Uh, if that's what gets your blood going, go the Legends cars at South Boston. Move up to the SK Modifieds. Uh, run those in, I don't know, pick up track. Milwaukee is a really good place for those cars. Uh, up through the NASCAR trucks. Uh, through the car of tomorrow, which is what these guys are running the Impalas. Um, once you've earned your license, uh, as you step up through the classes, you really have uh, your choice of how you want to go. So they have lots of special events at Talladega. And it looks like some of the guys are diving in. They're going to leave Brad Davies hanging out there. Oh, there's trouble. Yeah, these guys tried to pit, and they, they got in each other as they were pitting. And there's a couple of cars up in the fence. And it looks uh, like right Thomas now, has a big damage and caution is out. And that will bring out the caution. So now Brad Davies and Thomas, looks like number five car, Thomas Lewandowski. Dale Earnhardt Jr. will take up third place. But it looks like some of our front runner, runners, Josh Berry, Thomas Hazard, those guys got hung out as they tried to go down into the pits and hit that apron. Yeah, Chris, Chris Mann is heavily damaged in that race. And he went up over the 19 car. This is what started the wreck. They were going down, and a bunch of cars slowed down to go to the, the pit road. And the 23 car got in the back of the 29 car, or the 19 car, and I'm not sure uh, whose fault that was. Not blaming incident, but they, those two cars definitely made contact, and that started the incident. So as we begin, begin to circle under our first yellow flag of the evening around the Pontiac Solstice pace car, this really couldn't be any better of a time to find a yellow flag for these guys as those guys were going into the pits, and everybody, you'll see everybody going to the pits here, I'm fairly certain. Yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like Jordan Erickson had to check up just a little bit, and I'm not even sure if he intended to pit, but he checked up a little bit for the cars that were pitting, and uh, Chris got Chris got into him, and then uh, Jordan got into the back of some cars that were actually going to pit road. I think the two car was involved uh, in that, and that's uh, Thomas Hazard who's been running up front. Uh, Jordan got in the back of him, and I think Thomas able to save it pretty well, but uh, that that whole getting on the pit road with a group of cars, people always. You know, they want to they wanna make friends, they want to pit with other people, but it's so hard, you know, pitting with a bunch of people, everybody breaking at their, their limit, and uh, that's actually yeah, tougher, tougher than driving around the track and racing and everybody. everybody. And doing it under green makes it that much more difficult, as we see every single car practically, it looks like, going into the pits. Maybe a couple of guys are going to uh, take advantage of the wave around rule. Uh, as I'm watching Brad Davies come in and out, and it looks like he's getting out, beats everybody off of pit road. And I think I see Joel Putty back there doing fairly well. Jesse Atchison had a really good pit stop. J 
Jason Anderson is actually still out there with the number 30 car of Jason, Jacob Adler. Josh Berry stayed out. Daniel Pope stayed out. So the first of the pitted cars uh, are scored in fifth place with Brad Davies. Josh Berry made his pit stop uh, along with he was already he was headed to pit road when uh, the accident happened. So I'm not sure if he entered the pit road before it was closed or not. If he did, uh, if he got in before it was closed, that's good because he's uh, he's made a stop and he's back up in front of the pack. If he's been uh, if he did receive a black flag for that, that's going to be a problem for him. But uh, I'm not sure. We'll have to see what happens. So tell these guys, tell our listeners or their viewers about what the experience is as far as once they get back behind, you know, once they do their pace car, what do they expect when they come uh, to get up behind the pace car, uh, to get into order, you know, what messages are they seeing? How do they know what order they need to be in? Well, when you're when you're under a yellow flag, you'll get a message that comes up, a little uh, a screen that will come up and tell you what car you're supposed to be following. So and then uh, so you'll get in position and you'll follow that car like right now. Josh Berry, he's receiving a penalty for the end of the longest line for pitting in a closed pit. So him and I believe Daniel Pope, they're headed to the back of the line right now because they got a penalty and they're receiving a message to where they need to be and what car they need to be following. When they get, uh, when if they're if they're uh, getting a lap back, they will also get that message. So basically, everything is typed out in the screen in front of you, in a message that all you have to do is follow those directions and uh, you'll know exactly what you need to do. Yep, and they've got a, uh, a screen called an F3 screen, which for lack of a better name for it. Oh, and it looks like, oh, I was watching uh, Connor McKenzie uh, as he entered the pit. Somebody stopped right on pit road in front of him. I don't know who that was. Let's see if I can get a, a number like Josh on Barry. that car. Josh may have yeah. not been in, in the right order in line. If he, would have, if he were to pit, uh, not being in the right order, uh, he would get another penalty. Uh, he stopped on pit road there at the entrance. The problem with that is a couple cars passed him going to the pits. And that may have gotten them, gotten them penalties, and they might not be happy about his maneuver there. So we'll have to see what happens there. Yeah, that was Josh Berry and Chris Main almost slammed into him as Connor McKenzie did as well. That's not going to be good for Josh Berry, who qualified third and is now going to get shuffled all the way to the back of the pack. Josh and obviously feeling a little bit of frustration. He couldn't help it. He was headed to pit road, uh, and then the accident happened. So he probably got caught out with that black flag a little bit. But uh, uh, that will be exciting watching him come back up to the front. Uh, as we're headed under caution here. And so currently it looks like the uh, number 24 Jason Anderson car is being scored in the lead. Uh, Brad Davies in second, Thomas Lewandowski in third, Jesse Atchison in fourth, and Robert Hall in fifth. As we wait for timing and scoring to update here, Jason Anderson, I don't recall uh, winning the run, winning the, uh, the fight off pit road, but I, I guess he did. So as we run, so we're getting word that Jason Anderson has not actually pitted yet. Let's see if we can confirm that with uh, Chuck. If you can uh, possibly Jason. back up your back up yeah. your tape machine and see if that uh, see if you can see if Jason Anderson actually pitted yet. As these guys make their way down the back straightaway. Well, while we're looking that up, let's remind everybody that next week is what iRacing calls Week 13 Fun Week, and uh, which happens four times a year. It's at the end of every season. And uh, and uh, as Josh and Jason Anderson moves off right now, he probably just wants to lead a few laps and get some bonus points. And that'll so right, do it. Uh, next week, uh, Week 13, this is also the time that iRacing releases new features, and there will be, some, there will be fun races and official races all week long. Uh, fun races next week are going to be exciting because they're going to include a new feature, um, that we call mixed class racing, where we're going to have a lot of different types of cars on on the track at the same time. So uh, a lot of members been looking forward to that mixed class racing. There are going to be many new features and uh, content that are going to be released in that week too. Um, this week 13 is exciting because we're going to re uh, have the V8 supercars and Phillip Island, the racetrack from Australia, is also going to be available. So uh, a good off season. Our off season. Uh, we call week 13 it only lasts a week um, between between seasons, but we got a lot of cool stuff going on in this uh, in this off season this time. 
I actually take that opportunity to sort of take a breather because I, you know, as racing in a whole season and focusing on one car the entire time, it's great to sort of step back. And I particularly am looking forward to that V8 supercar coming out. Uh, That's a car that I actually am deciding to run next season. Uh, So I am really looking forward to having big, packed races with a whole lot of competition and a whole lot of fun times with that. Uh, We're also... uh, uh, announcing the uh, the summertime release of the iRacing Driving School that's going to allow you to learn uh, finer points of racing with video tutorials uh, that allow in-sim practice. Uh, this is a, a feature that iRacing is going to provide free to its members, which is uh, uh, something that everybody's been sort of looking forward to for a long time, a little some video uh, 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 driving school help. Yeah, the cool thing about that, and this is a long-anticipated uh, feature for the service, but the great thing about that is uh, as iRacing grows, iRacing is attracting a lot of uh, new customers who don't, don't have a lot of driving experience. So when they get out in the track, they just don't know you know, what to do or, or what, what, what people are expecting from them. And it's great when you, when you can come on the service and have the tools to watch some videos and get some instruction when, so you can go out with confidence and race against other people. Uh, the great, the great part of iRacing, it, it's 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 all about uh, the community and the competition that you'll you'll share with people from all around the world, and this will allow people to do that and not be intimidated as as there's no instruction. Now we'll have instruction, and we'll have schools, and that will lead to a, a lot more people, uh, new members, being able to have the tools that they need to gain experience quicker and move up through the ranks to be able to dr- drive uh, the the higher end cars. And so as we circle around behind the Pontiac Pace car, it looks like the lights are out, so we will be going green this time by. Don't forget that in two weeks uh, we'll be racing at Darlington, uh, back to just a little bit over a mile, uh, May 5th at this same time, 180-lap race around that around that uh, interesting-shaped, uh, teardrop-shaped course that, uh, that Darlington is. It's an amazing track to run at. Uh, uh, so don't forget that right here on PSR TV, two weeks from tonight, Week 7 of the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship here on PSR TV. Yeah, Darlington's a great track. It's only two lanes wide, very skinny, very difficult to drive, but since it's so much of a challenge, the, these drivers love it. And uh, uh, it's sure it'll be a great race at Darlington. As uh, about a half a lap to go here, we're working lap number 49. We'll get the green flag on lap 50. So something that uh, must be noted, uh, something else that Richard Taller mentioned to us in a practice session is that some of these guys, now I don't know, I, we, we don't have, we're not privy to the information, but some of these guys could go this entire race on one set of tires. I mean, have we noticed anybody that jumped fairly high up? Jesse Atchison kind of came up a little bit. Uh, Theo Olsen up from the back. Ray Alfala up from the back. I wonder if these guys took two or zero tires uh, during their pit stops. Yeah, it, it, they are taking a little bit of risk. Even the tires will probably go the whole way. That they, Those cars will move around a little bit more, you know, in these big drafts. So I bet you most of these guys uh, uh, took took uh, Jesse Ashton. Yeah, Jesse Ashton's up there in the third spot. Uh, definitely may have uh, done something like that to get himself up there. And you, you're going to want to take some risks and chances uh, to get yourself up in the positions you need to be. But right now we're getting ready to go green on lap 50. All right, so as we get ready for the green flag, number four, Brad Davies led from the drop of the green flag, takes that inside line. Looks like the number five car of, uh, of Thomas Lewandowski is going to lead up that outside line with, with Robert Hall right behind him, and they both tuck in to go single file. So right now it's Brad Davies on the point. Uh, the number eight car of Jesse Atchison in second place. Lewandowski now in third. Yeah, it looks like that, that when a couple of those guys jumped down there in the lower lane, that had an accordion effect back in the back, and that uh, caught Theo Olsen out. Who, he, he had to move to the high side um, as the seven car, I believe it was Ray Alfala. Ray Alfala uh, got underneath him, so Theo Olsen uh, getting uh, strung out, uh, hung out, um, and sliding all the way back. Now he's trying to move down, and actually made some contact with a car he tried to move down in front of, and that caused a big jumble behind him. And Ray Alfala, our winner uh, a couple of weeks ago in Martinsville, not afraid to do what it takes to get get win here as he uh, turned around Richard Tyler on the final turn of the final lap. Uh, a couple of notables here. Dale Earnhardt Jr., who is actually running up there at the front, is now back in 10th. 
looks like Richard Towler, our current points leader, is way down at 29th now. So he's got to get his work done. He's got 39 laps to get back up to the front. It looks like they may not have that opportunity the way this race has been gone so far. So as we were talking there, Richard Putty gets really sideways. Gets his car all out of shape down on the apron. Almost gets it around, but really gets uh, a really fantastic bit of car control to get his number 23 machine back underway. Jordan Erickson makes pit stop. Pause for a so. penalty. He's getting back out in the track. Jordan uh, running a couple laps down now. So let's take a look at the number 27 car of Robert Hall up front running the outside line. So he had, uh, I believe it was Gorlinski, or no, Thomas Lewandowski, who was the number five car leading up that outside line when they came back to the green flag. And now it's Robert Hall who came up behind Dale Earnhardt Jr. to help him. Now it looks like Dale Earnhardt Jr. is going to come behind and help him this time on that outside line as we see Robert Hall in the 27 car, the number 22 of Vinny Sansoni and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, with Theo Olsen uh, taking advantage of that outside line. Yeah, this pack split into uh, two packs actually. Uh, the front pack consisting of, it looks like uh, 17 cars with Schoenberg at the back of it and Josh Berry leading the second pack. There was a mix up back there. I believe when Theo Olsen tried to get back down the line, uh, that mixed things up a little bit. And maybe it wasn't Theo. Maybe it was uh, 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 Darren Stevens at back there. Theo's and Darren's car painted very similarly. But that split uh, these packs packs up pretty good. And now there's two packs. So we'll have to see if that second pack right now, 2.7 seconds behind the leader, we'll see if they can gain in on the first pack. As we kind of zoom in on Josh Berry there, our winner two weeks ago in Phoenix. Leading up that second pack with the number 25 car of Andrew Fayish, uh, Fayish the third, and Richard Towler uh, trying to get caught back up to that lead pack. Brian Schoenberg at the tail end of that lead pack. Pack looks like it's got about 15 or so cars in it. Yeah, it looks like they're gaining out. on uh, the front pack right now. That went from 2.7 seconds down to 2.5, so they're slowly gaining on them and uh, see if they'll make it back. Right now, Schoenberg, the end of that uh, second pack, they're trying to snip a little bit of draft off of Schoenberg to try to get that pack back up through here. So it looks like we may end up seeing this home race go with just that one yellow flag. I don't want to jinx this too soon, but the one yellow flag caused by the fact that they're Guys were just got so used to running, uh, running their lines the entire time. You're running this solid line, and then just one deviation from it, somebody dove down into the pits, checked up a little bit uh, as somebody tried to follow him. So uh, I have a feeling that it probably won't, we won't be so lucky towards the end. But right now, it's a very calm bunch of drivers. Not really. Well, it's a calm bunch crazy. of drivers right now. But as we get down to the end of this race, every one of these drivers thinks that they can win it, and then you're, you're going to start seeing some moves. That uh, that you you know you're not seeing right now. These guys are waiting. These guys are very smart, and right now it's a chess game. Um, they're positioning themselves just to be at the end. But once we get down to 20 laps to go, I'm quite certain that you're going to see a lot of moves that we're not seeing now. So right now is not the time to make those moves. Right now, the first pack's trying to get away from the second pack, and the second pack's trying to gain on the first pack because the se the first pack doesn't want the second pack to get there because they don't want to have to contend with all of those drivers right now. Right now they're away from those drivers and they don't have to worry about them. But if that second pack catches them, that's just that many more drivers that they got to fight for the win. So right now they're just trying to stay in line and pull away from the second pack. And the second pack is trying to catch the first pack. And I'll be the first person to admit I'm pretty impressed with how well they're behaving so far. <laughs> Considering the past couple of races we've had, I'm, uh, I'm glad to see that we're not, uh, that there's not a whole lot of crazy driving going on at this point. So. I may end up eating my shoe on that one later on, but I hope that this will will get it out. So Brad Davies has led from the drop of the green flag. Looks like he's led 56 laps. At this point, he's going to get that five extra bonus points that he needs desperately in the championship for leading the most laps and getting the extra five points. Josh Berry pulling in even further now on the second pack down to 1.8 seconds. 
between him and the leader, and it's only point, uh, one point, or actually one second between him and the uh, last car in that lead draft is Brian Schoenberg. So they're actually going to be able to start sniffing that draft here shortly, and there's no doubt within a lap or two that second pack is going to be back with the first pack, and all these drivers are going to be right together again. So we've got a little bit of a break in the action here. Let's take a few minutes to run down the order as we continue on on lap number 57 of the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. As we mentioned, from the green flag, Brad Davies still on the point, still leading, has led the most laps this afternoon or this evening. Uh, Brad Davies in first, Jesse Atchison in the number eight in second place, Thomas Lewandowski in third place, Robert Hall on the outside in that black number 20, uh, 27, uh, 27 machine uh, in fourth, and John Gorlinski uh, in that number 14 Virginia Tech car in fifth. Running into the sixth spot is Vinny Sansoni. In seventh place is Dale Earnhardt Jr. In the eighth spot right now you'll find Ray Alfala. Theo Olsen's running ninth. And Brian Blackford is in the tenth spot. Uh, Tyler Hudson, that uh, bright yellow and black machine, uh, the number 10 machine, will be running in 11th place. Uh, Cindy Banerjee in 12th from Las Vegas. Darren Stevens in 13th. Jordan Hightower in the number 37 car in 14th. Mike Kelly. Oop, there's just a switch there. All right, Mike Kelly. Looks like Mike Kelly got jumped around a little bit. Sorry, timing and scoring is a little weird when they cross the start-finish line while we're doing this. Well, we'll just pick it up at 15. Jordan Hightower, 15th. Mike Kelly in 16th. Uh, Andrew Fayish, the third, in 17th. Derek Cash in 18th, Patrick Fogel in 19th, and Brian Schoenberg in 20th. Well, Tom, you remember we were talking about those two packs? They don't exist anymore. It's now one pack, and Darren Steven is up on the outside. He's trying to make a three. He's definitely not trying no more. He's making a three wide, and he's got uh, a little bit of help up there with him. Uh, I believe that's Daniel Pope the third. Daniel up there running in the top half of the field, actually top couple positions the whole race, wants to hook up with Stevens here and try to make it back to the front. And that's uh, we're now two thirds of the way through the race, running. Yeah, running Ryan 60. Schoenberg's in trouble down the back down on uh, across the start finish line. He actually got down the apron in the track and had to stay down there, not to cause a wreck. So Schoenberg sacrificed himself a little bit right there, not to cause a big wreck. He got down the inside, not sure if he got bumped or whatever, but he could have moved back on the track, which kind of caused some big problems. But uh, Give it to Schoenberg right there. He made a hard choice to lose a bunch of spots, but to save the rest of the field. All right, so as we see cars three wide back there in the back, back up to the front, it looks like Brad Davies is beginning to pull out again uh, with Jesse Atchison right on his tail and Lewandowski. Uh, in third place as, a, as the number 27 Robert Hall and the number 22 Vinny Sansoni uh, try and sneak up there with uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. pushing them on yeah. the outside. Yeah, look at that outside line. Darren Stevens up there making it work with uh, uh, with Daniel Pope. Uh, Darren Stevens is uh, is one of the most outstanding sim racers uh, on the service. Uh, he, he's been racing forever, and he's always been a very good driver out there. Uh, making a three wide and look at that the, the five five cars out there in that third draft on the outside three wide the whole way around you'll see you'll hear people all the time complaining about three wide situations and these guys are just are just owning it right now with the three wide racing on the outside of the outside line man it's just got to have some amazing pressures it looks like the number three car of josh berry's really trying to push past tyler hudson a little bit maybe he uh Missed his missed his uh, his lift point a little bit when Tyler Hudson came through that turn, but uh, looks like uh, it's looking like Josh Berry was wanting to sneak in to make it four wide between Tyler Hudson and uh, Sandeep Banerjee. That would have been tragic. Yeah, the most uh, the most uncomfortable spot in all of this are the guys in the middle, because all they can do is stay in line. They they can't work the the inside. And uh, or the outside, they just got to stay in the middle, and then they're so dependent on those cars around them. And you know the 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 bumps on the on the track and the setups. Now Talladega is usually a very smooth track, but just everything going on and just a one little wiggle could cause a big problem. Darren Stevens 
very impressive, uh, along with uh, Daniel Pope there up on the outside. And Patrick Fogel, I believe, is up there with them. They're all making that outside line work and doing a fantastic job up there. And it's really a picture, a thing of beauty to watch these guys able to run this three wide and uh, and really just make their real life counterparts uh, know that it's a you know that 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 they can do it in the sim world as well. Uh, it's really proof is in the pudding of how well this track is modeled and how well these cars are modeled that they were able to pull this off. And it really does look like Darren Stevens uh, and the number twenty six machine. Um, uh, party and I can't. Oh, of Daniel Pope the third are really beginning to gain up on like Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Theo Olson in the yeah, second Daniel line. Pope, Daniel Pope uh, proved the last time when he was up uh, drafting. Uh, I believe uh, that was with uh, Thomas Hazard earlier in the day. He's, he's a great guy to have on your rear bumper because he really knows how to work the draft. And right now he's showing that with Stevens up there in the top ten. Those guys are right now. Stevens is in the eleventh spot, so they're getting ready to crack the top ten up there on that outside lane. Yeah, I just, yeah, I don't know how they do it. <laughs> I've tried two wide racing, and two wide racing is is you know enough to make my head explode. Uh, with three wide racing, I can't imagine trying to be stuck in the middle like some of those guys. Like Tyler Hudson's been in the middle for ten laps. Uh, oh, it's crazy. It, it's definitely crazy, especially where Tyler Hudson is and uh, Andrew Fayesh, the third, right right in there. It's tough, and uh, but. These guys are the best, and that's why they are where they are at right now. Is because they understand what's going on, and, look and at they this. have Tyler the skill Hudson's and the top here. They're wide. working four wide now. As Steel Olsen tries to move his way around Tyler Hudson, Dar Darren Stevens sees that he falls in behind uh, Olsen. Uh, Stevens doesn't like that. Stevens wanted to be the front car, but Olsen saw the opportunity that, of that outside lane, moved his way up in front of Stevens, and now Theo Olsen will be the lead car on the outside line. Yeah, I wonder if it was less of the fact that Theo Olsen saw the advantage of the outside lane, but I think Tyler Hudson really pushed his way down between him and uh, and the number 31 machine of Brian Blacker there, the uh, bright green machine on the inside. It looked like it was more really of a pass by Tyler Hudson than it was a, uh, uh, a really Theo Olsen sort of scooting up to the outside. It very well may have been, but Theo Olsen, didn't, whether he had a choice or not, he's up there now and he has to make it work. And, uh, I think Steven's a little frustrated because Steven's uh, he's looking to the outside again, trying to make a four wide. And as much as as much as we love to see a three wide racing here, uh, I have a little a little worry about the four wide stuff right now. But Stevens is a good car to have out in front of that four or top draft, and he knows how to make it work with Daniel Pope there in second. And I know Steven's a little bit frustrated right now. He wants to be the lead car on that outside line. So as we work lap 66 of 90. We're getting to the point now where these guys are really going to have to start thinking with, about the end game. Brad Davies leads them still as, from the drop of the green flag uh, in first place. Jesse Atchison still in second. Thomas Lewandowski in third. Robert Hall in fourth. And Gorlinski in fifth or being scored in fifth. Look out for Tyler Hudson. He's on the move. Uh, looks like he's going to really bump Dale Earnhardt Jr. and bash in his rear wing or bash in his rear bumper. Oh, they're definitely four wide now. Theo Olsen right there. Uh, Fash, they, they get it worked out, uh, the number three car, and that was Josh Berry. Uh, he actually was out in that top lane. He worked his way back down to the inside. They all got it worked out. They were four wide there and coming through the trioval, but they all got it worked out, um, doing a great job out there, and actually a lot of dicing going on now. They're getting a lap 67. These guys are starting to feel the pressure of the end of the race, and they want to make things happen now. And let's see if Darren Stevens is actually going to push Theo Olsen a little bit. I'm beginning to wonder if Theo Olsen may have only taken two tires uh, or maybe on his original tires because he made a big jump from earlier in the race, I believe, if I'm remembering correctly. So he might even be holding up Darren Stevens on that third line. You know, guy's doing a really good job right now. J Robert Hall, you know, we don't always see his name up in the front of races, but he's doing a great job at the restricted plate track right now. Uh, Vinny Sansoni up there he's up in the sixth spot right now he's jumped up a bunch of positions dale jr right there on the outside line but uh all these guys uh are doing a real good job up front right now and uh making everything work and so vinnie sansoni uh as you mentioned uh jumped up two places from dead last in the points to really uh if he can if he can pull this off this will be certainly his best finish of the of the series and could launch him up quite a bit in the points chase And Brad Davies out front right now. Brad Davies is doing a great job. Obviously a great setup and maybe even the fastest car on the track right now. 
So that's why people haven't been able to get around to me. Obviously, the fastest car, he's uh, qualified on the pole. Jesse Atchin, Atchin's uh, been working in right on his rear bumper right now, trying to make that uh, uh, line work. But Theo Olsen out there on the outside lane. Uh, Darren Stevens and also uh, the pink car. Who's driving that pink car? That's Connor McKenzie Connor on the outside McKenzie. line right there. Yep, Connor McKenzie in that pink car on the outside line. And a word for Brad Davies, who hails from uh, hails from Florida, uh, is in the Florida uh, Florida group at iRacing. Something we didn't mention. You do get grouped up in regions around the world. Um, running that old school Microsoft Force Feedback Sidewinder wheel from probably at least a a. Uh, an administration or so ago, making it work still as he's carried the, the entire field in that Whiskey River, that Orange Whiskey River number four from the drop of the green flag. Yeah, what the what the regions will do is they give you everybody a, a, a team to work with, and uh, a lot of these different regional drivers will work together. Even though all the regions race together uh, in, in, in every race that happens, uh, the... Uh, Regions will give those drivers a chance and opportunity to work with each other. And uh, why they do want to work with each other is because they, they work together uh, with, in world championship points, uh, team world championships. And uh, as we got three wide now, John Gorlinski down the middle, he moves yeah. Robert Hall up to the outside. And Junior also works his way through the middle. Here oh, it comes. Oh, big crash. Tyler Hudson, number 22. Josh Berry, number three. The number 25 car is involved with it. Oh, this is going to be bad for some of the some of our front runners. As I was flying a kite behind the uh, Darren Stevens car, that number fifteen who was uh, who was involved with that, Josh Berry, looks like Vinny Sonsoni involved yeah, in that. Yeah, I believe it all started up there with Robert Robert Hall and Vinny Sonsoni, as those guys got a little bit. Uh, a little bit of a four wide situation when Gorlinski forced on the outside since Sony tried to look underneath the hall right right there he probably got sucked up into the draft a little bit and there was a little bit of contact that sent the 22 car since Sony down in the Hudson and that sent them down into uh, uh, the number three car which is is that Josh Berry the three yeah Josh Berry and that sent Berry up on the lid yeah yeah, it was an ugly situation. I was, uh, let's see if I can see what was going on here. It looked like, yeah, the 22 came down on the 10, and Josh Berry was an innocent victim. Darren Stevens, innocent victim. The number 25 car, innocent victim. Yeah, it's, it's tough. When you get stacked up like that, uh, some guy's checking up, and, and you're trying to lift and not touch a car in front of you. And like we said before, these guys are all racing. Very tight, doing some incredibly impressive uh, driving. Uh, you just have a, a little accident like this, and it's not a little accident. It's obviously a big accident, but a little mistake causes a big accident. And just as happens in the real world, you'll have the big one every now and then at Talladega. I think you could probably call that the big one. Let's see if we can get a count. Chuck, did you get really a, a count of how many people were involved with that wreck? It looks to me... Uh... At least nine cars had it some form of contact. I'm not really sure who may be damaged super heavily. There's a lot of pit stops going on back here, and we'll find out, you know, how many are going to be able to continue and how many won't. But that was sure a stack up, and it, I'm sure, changed a lot of people's plans quickly. It looks like, let's take a look here, Florian Goddard. He was kind of catching up from the end. He may have just checked up under braking. Connor McKenzie is still out there. The leaders did not pit, so Brad Davies in that Whiskey River number four still out front with Jesse Atchison being scored in second. Thomas Lewandowski still in third. Gorlinski, who was probably the, it, it, his move to the inside to go three wide up there at the front, looked like Dale Jr. was right on his tail at the time. Um, may have, you know, his move may have may have instigated it. I won't say caused it, but, you know, people sort of said, oh, wait, something's going on, and that was the end of that. Doesn't take much, does it? Yeah, it's really it's you know nobody wanted to make that wreck happen, and uh, you know uh, Robert and uh, and the car he got together with they didn't want to make that wreck happen, but it happened, and it was a mistake. And uh, you know it's quite impressive that uh, the, the, the racing that was going on that it took that long for it to happen. But now here we are, the end of the race with uh what we got uh, 25 laps to go 18 laps to go 18 laps to go okay and we're gonna have 18 laps to go 
and there's going to be a very mad scramble from here on out. I don't think we're going to see the same kind of race we saw up to this point. And that, you know, that's the way it is in this kind of racing. That's the way it is in the real world, and that's the way we're going to have it here. But hopefully these guys will have a good, clean race and uh, get to the end. But uh, I think we're seeing a lot of uh, paint jobs out there that aren't going to be the same here shortly. All right, so as we as we circle around under the pace car, behind the pace car, under the yellow flag, let's run through the whole field here real quick, take a look at what we've got going on as where they stand as they cross the start-finish line on lap number 73. So hang on, let me get my cameras all squared away here. All righty, so... On the point still, it is Brad Davies in that number four Whiskey River car. On point, led from the drop of the green flag. Jesse Atchison in the number eight machine in second place. Thomas Lewandowski in the number five in third place. Uh, John Gorlinski in that beautiful Virginia Tech car is in fourth. Ray Alfala in that RPM uh, uh, motorsports car in fifth place. Riding in sixth spot right now is the number one car of Dale Earnhardt Jr. Brian Blackford is uh, in the seventh spot. In the uh, number 27 car, in the eighth spot, Robert Hall. Vinny Sansoni in the number 22 car is running ninth. And Sandeep Banerjee, all the way from India, is running in tenth spot. As I'm scrolling through these cars real quick, I notice Sandeep's uh, font is very much like the old... Uh, 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 I'm trying to remember the dip in tobacco from back in the back in the sec, uh, 70s. Yeah, very, that car very is good. Uh, the old Rick Mast uh, Skull Bandit car from Skull way back in Bandit. the Bandit. Thank you very much. It looks like he stole that font, and it really is a phenomenal looking car. Uh, Theo Olson uh, in the number six car. Uh, Andrew Fayish, the third in the number 25 machine, takes up the 12th position. Uh, Derek Cash in the Kane Properties, uh, number 13. 18th position, number 32 car. Uh, Mike Kelly in the uh, Great Plains uh, out there uh, pitching it for his uh, his regional team uh, in his Great Plains car, uh, bringing up the 14th spot. Connor McKenzie in that bright pink machine in the 15th spot. In the 16th spot, Daniel Pope II has been doing a really good job all race, especially as a drafting partner to other cars. In the 17th spot is Patrick Fogel. And the 18th spot, Jacob Elder, 19th, Thomas Hazard. And in the 20th spot right now, Richard Tyler. Oh, that's bad for Richard Tyler. In 23rd, uh, 21st, Dion Vergers. Uh, Richard Tyler and Dion Vergers both uh, uh, compete in the road racing and oval racing disciplines here at iRacing. Uh, Brian Schoenberg in 22nd. Florian Goddard in 23rd in that iReviews car. Uh, Jordan Hightower is in 25th. John Prather runs in the 26th spot right now with Jim Moore, 27th. 28th spot is Justin Trombley. 29th, Darren Stevens, who was involved in that incident. Uh, Matt Sintel is running in the 30th spot. And uh, let's have a word for John Prather and his beautiful uh, PSR TV logo he's got painted on that number 21 machine. Uh, in the 31st spot, Chris Main. Joel Putty is in 32nd. Jordan Erickson, 33rd. Uh, Tyler Hudson has been shuffled back to 34th uh, in that number 10 machine uh, after that accident. Josh Berry, too, is in 35th. Looks like his car is all kinds of sideways. Uh, if we can get a shot from that, the number three car, Mr. Director, Joel Putty, I mean, Josh Berry's car is really out there almost ceremoniously, and, I, you know, I probably think he should probably park the thing. And out of the race this evening, uh, the number 36 uh, place, Derek Wood in the number nine car, and Josh Parker in bringing up the rear in 37th. And let's talk about that real quick. Josh Berry is out there circling around in a car that really has no business running out there. Tyler Hudson got a lot of grief uh, from his fellow drivers for going out there and causing the yellow two weeks ago in Phoenix uh, by doing the exact same thing. I wonder if Josh Berry is is really just, you know, doing something that, you know, probably should be, you know, called on by the officials.
Yeah, as I, I'm watching Tyler Hudson's car, it is just crabbing sideways. I think he can't be, you know, he, that's the pace where it goes off. Let's just get off of that and jump right back up to the lead. Uh, Brad Davies is going to run him back up to the green flag here as we're going to cross the start-finish line at lap number 75 with only 15 laps to go. This is going to be a sprint. These guys have been patient so far. I imagine it's going to end fairly quickly. Josh Berry pulls his car to pit lane as uh, he, knows, he knows he should. Davies leads him down the front straightaway. Jesse Atchison looking on the outside lane. Uh, Junior up there on the outside lane also. Ashkin pulls his way down uh, into he the dives spot in on the inside hard. lane. And that will allow Junior to be the top car on the outside lane. And this is what Junior wants. Junior wants to be the lead car on that outside draft. And that will give him a shot for a win. And look at who's right behind him again, number 27, Robert Hall, who's been sticking with Dale Jr. Uh, probably the smartest guy on the track getting right up behind him is going to push Dale Jr. along with that number 32 machine of uh, Derek Cash on that outside row. Somebody really going to have to put it to Brad Davies now because he's been leading this whole time, but I don't think he's going to win this thing if, if any of that outside line has anything to do with it. And we see Gorlinski really going for the lead now as he jumps out to the outside line to cut off Dale Jr., and Dale Jr. is going to get right behind him and see if he can push him out to the lead. Yeah, Gorlinski knows that if he's going to have a shot at this, he needs to get out from behind that lead car, and Gorlinski uh, has Jr. right on the back. I mean, Gorlinski will know from uh, being there earlier. Remember when uh, Jr. was pushing Gorlinski, uh, and those two guys got together, and that sent Gorlinski up into that uh, outside third lane. Right now, they're back together on the inside. Gorlinski knows that Junior knows how to work this draft and can push him to the front. And we've had five winners in five races so far. John Gorlinski currently running, uh, ran second two weeks ago in Phoenix, running ninth in the points, so he needs this victory. Dale Earnhardt Jr. is also kind of floundering around low, uh, back in the points a little bit, and also needs this victory. So look for these guys to try and really push them way past Brad Davies. Sandy Benji got hung out on the outside line up there, and he's falling back a little bit, uh, trying to make that outside work, line work again. This junior is right on the back of Gorlinski as they head down in front of number one. As you see Junior move up the track a little bit, Sandy uh, actually goes up and bumps the outside wall, he gets together with a 30 car down there on the inside. Those two cars bang, bang doors, but uh, both of them able to save it back there. But a good job of driving with those those cars back in the back there with uh, Sandeep and uh, Jacob Alder. As gotta be the gotta be the curse of the announcers. As soon as we mention somebody, they completely lose it for some reason. I think we're going to stop talking about the leaders because something else bad is going to happen. All right, so Brad Davies still on that inside line with uh, Thomas Lewin. Uh, I'm sorry, check uh, who is that? Jesse Atchison right beside him. And it looks like uh, Gorlinski may have a better car than Brad Davies, certainly a better car with Dale Jr. behind him. Yeah, it's, it's a better drafting partner is what it is right now. As Jr. knows what he's doing, he's an expert at this real world and eye racing. This is where he gets, oh. uh, Dale, Dale gets some training. And there's some bumping going on right now, and that sends Robert Hall up the track. And that's going to allow who's that Derek Cash to, to fall in and uh, take Robert Hall to the outside. And it looks like Dale Jr.'s buddy, Robert Hall, is going to get hung out to dry here by some of this, this second line. But for a minute there, uh, Gorlinski was out, had his nose out in front of Brad Davies. So it knows, we know he can do it. There's some guys making some big moves. Tom, Thomas and Hazard uh, just moved past a couple cars uh, back in the middle of the pack there. And there's some guys in the middle of the pack making their way up to the front. They're trying to make some big moves here, getting down to the end of this race. we got about 12 laps to go. Meanwhile, back up on the front, Dale Earnhardt Jr. is beating the life out of Gorlinski's car. He's really beating and banging on him a little bit. Really touched him into this turn last time around. Yeah, it's so unsettling, too. You got that car beating on the rear end of your car. You're almost out of control going in the corner, and you got somebody just pushing you down the straightaways and uh, just hoping that they don't lift you up. And, oh. and you're hoping that they keep the tires on the track. Skorlinski blinks a little bit going down the back straightaway. That can't be helping anything. I think Dale needs to be real careful with that latency issue. But he's also got uh, uh, the number 32, Derek Cash, pushing behind him as well to the point where Dale's rear bumper is now crunched in. So it's really crunch time for these guys uh the next yep. time by they're going to be 10 laps to go yeah people might be wondering well what causes that uh car to blink a little bit and it could be a number of different factors uh usually if you see one car blinking it's uh something between uh on that driver's end or between him and him and the service but uh as you can see everybody else rock solid right now so uh everything looking good here on iRacing's end is just uh 
You never know what that blink could be on uh, John's end there. It could easily be his family going and buying something off Amazon. Somebody opened That's the laptop correct. in the other room, and all of a sudden he, he doesn't have the pipe that he needed to to get the, uh, uh, get the race through. Patrick Fogel up on the outside lane, three wide there. He moves his way back down to, to the little group of Patrick Fogel trying to make something happen to get his way to the front. And and so as we, if we can see a high shot, Mr. Director, from some of these cars running three wide, they are now beginning to bump and bang around. Uh, they are beginning to, to, to really try and open the doors for themselves. And I think up front we're going to find the same thing as it looks like Dale Earnhardt Jr. sort of wants to go to the outside of Gorlinski, but I don't think Gorlinski is going to have any problem as Dale again bangs Gorlinski hard as he pushes him down the straightaway. Yeah, yeah it looks like Gorlinski actually had a nose time. out there. Right now, Brian, uh, or Robert Hall out there working that outside line again. Fogel tried to force his way up in front of Hall coming off of corner number two. And then you see Daniel Pope right there again pushing Robert Hall. Daniel Pope is, might be the best pusher out there on the track today, and everybody wants to team up with him as uh, as Fogel now wants up in the high lane. He's able to get clear and get up in that high lane. So we're going to see the high lane out uh, being com or coming up right now as uh, Davies did lead him across that line right now, but leading him in turn number one, I believe Gorlinski had the advantage. And let's go back up front to the Gorlinski-Brad uh, Davies battle, which is really technically coming down to the Jesse Atchison-Dale Earnhardt Jr. battle is who's going to push uh, somebody out far enough to get that win. Don't put it past any of these guys. You really push hard when you get into the turn uh, to take that as it may get Gorlinski scored as the leader this time by. Let's see what happens. Dale Earnhardt's actually backed off just a little bit from Gorlinski. Brad Davies has been the absolute picture poster of consistency this entire race, hugging that inside line. Him and uh, Lewandowski or Jesse Atkinson have just been, been absolutely yeah, On the very outside line, um, the 18 car of Patrick Fogel has made it into the ninth position right now. That outside line working better than it has all day. Uh, the second line, the middle line of uh, Gorlinski and Junior, they are doing a great job right now also. As they have one car in the middle of the pack there blinked a little bit. Uh, Gorlinski coming down the back straightaway. Th that outside line that uh, Junior has going on right there, he may be able to push uh, Gorlinski to the win. And so uh, to be denied of a flag-to-flag -flag victory, John Gorlinski gets scored as the leader that time by lap number 83. So chalk one up for Gorlinski and Dale Earnhardt Jr. Uh, getting Gorlinski out there to give Brad to deny Brad Davies of a flag to flag victory. This time by, we'll have seven laps to go. Atchison pushing Davies. Gorlinski in the lead last time by. This time by, again, Same it thing. is Gorlinski in the lead being pushed by Dale Earnhardt Jr. And I'm wondering if Dale's going to try and poke his nose inside there, if, if uh, Derek Cash is going to follow him down to the inside. You know, it's all Junior very, is very loyal to the people he works with throughout the race. And I don't know, you know, if he'll make a bid. If he thinks that he can actually go for the win, I'm sure he will make a bid. But uh, Dale is, is very uh, loyal to those who work with him. And uh, earlier in the race, when we saw Junior and Gorlinski bump a little bit, I'm sure that Dale didn't mean to push uh, Gorlinski to the outside line. And he actually, you know, knowing him a little bit, uh, he actually might be working together with Gorlinski now and trying to push Gorlinski to this win. And I wonder if they're talking to each other in the chat room making this making this happen. But uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. Dale pushes Gorlinski one more time, but Gorlinski wiggles and goes a little high and may have lost a little momentum. So it looks like Brad Davies may stick his nose back down underneath here as Dale comes back up. Just him and... Brad Davies and Jesse Atchison have just been nailed together this whole race. Yeah, and that third draft out there with Fogel and Hall, they're still trying to make things work as they got uh, Daniel Pope in there, uh, who who has been you know absolutely a fantastic guy to have in your draft line today. Uh, they're making that outside work also. So if they can make it work, they're actually up there cracking the top ten still. They can make it work a little bit better. They may come up and challenge for the lead. And it looks like Jesse Atchison wants to sneak out to the outside a little bit. Maybe it was just a bobble on his part, but I think if he gets an opening to get in front of Gorlinski, he may do it to try and get past Davies with only four laps remaining. I know Atchison, he wants to win this race too. He doesn't have any, any loyalties to uh, Brad Davies that I know of, and, and he certainly would like to win this race. But uh, 
you know, second spot's not too bad either, so he's not going to do anything to uh, ruin his race over this. But, uh, you know, he, anybody in here would certainly love to win this race, and if they see that they have a, a shot to do it, they might take advantage of it. And there's, it looks like Atchison that's got Jesse. and he's up in the outside wall. Oh, that's going to be a nasty one. Oh, that's ugly. I'm not even watching it, and I just hear carnage. So that that would be our big one, ladies and gentlemen. I think Jesse Atchison sort of lost his way a little bit, may have just bobbled too much, and, uh, uh, and looks like he may have popped... Oh, he got squeezed is what happened. And he warped he right through the uh, Gorlinski car. Yeah, it looks like uh, it looks like he got pushed a little bit by Lewandowski. Lewandowski was trying to help him down the back straightaway there, and they had a little bit of a touch bumper, which uh, uh, sent uh, sent uh, his car moving right a little bit. And, uh, you know, there was maybe a little bit of a latency issue there, but uh, it looks like... Uh, Looks like a little bit of a contact between Lewandowski and Ashison caused the incident. And so that, ladies and gentlemen, is they say is that. So that's our big one that has caused the big shakeup here. So Brad Davies, uh, we may end up scoring this one under yellow flag. Once again, the uh, NASCAR Iverson.com Series World Championship is going to end under yellow. And it looks like a couple of people, when, uh, when the accident happened, it did look like uh, uh, Jesse sort of warped through the Gorlinski car. And had Gorlinski been a solid uh, mass, may have been able to stay in control. But uh, once he warped through, and that was, that was that, and some of the back cars bumped into him. But it did look like he got sandwiched in a little bit like Lewandowski. Yeah, what I believe happened there, there was a little bit of a, a latency issue on uh, Mr. Atchison. And uh, which caused uh, a little bit, you know, I don't know if that caused contact or whatever, but actually I think that probably helped him because he uh, had a chance to save his car there without uh, the contact between the other cars. Uh, unfortunately, the contact between him and Thomas uh, was a little bit too much and uh, that, you know, that caused an incident. Um, we're not sure if uh, uh, we're going to get the, the white flag or, or one lap to go or they're going to finish under yellow here. We'll have to see what happens. This is going to be, they're going to get the uh, yellow and white, I believe. And as we take a look at uh, Richard Towler, our current points leader, uh, whose points lead is actually in jeopardy this race um, as he limps around in bad, bad condition. I think he's just going to see what he can do to even just sort of finish the race with what he's got. Yeah, we'll probably be, probably be ending this race under caution. And while we have a chance, uh, Let's remind everybody that uh, uh, coming up uh, is our virtual Indy 500, the day before the real Indy 500. Um, the first heat will be broadcast in that race. And uh, if you're out at Indy this year, don't forget the iRacing trailer will be there. Um, and you can uh, you can stop by, and we'd love to see you out at the iRacing trailer at the Indy 500 this year. If, you can, if you're in the area, please stop by and say hello. And those guys love to talk about iRacing. I saw them at VIR last year during the... Uh during the Rolex sports car race, and it was just a neat thing, a big old 24-foot uh, trailer with a whole bunch of simulators and, uh, uh, and and wheels in it, and they can bring up the simulation right away. Uh, they'll probably have the Dolores loaded up at the Indy Five, uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That's really something to go see and go meet those guys that actually work for IRC because you guys are kind of a small outfit that have really done some fantastic things uh, for the sim racing community. Yeah, definitely stop down and see us there at that trailer, uh, and we'll give you a ride in one of these cars so uh, you can check it out. Or an Indy car around uh, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway if you're wondering what's, uh, what it's like to drive one. Stop by the iRacing trailer while you're there, and we'll show you. So, as the leader, Brad Davies takes the white-yellow flag combination. For the la oh, for the second, oh, check that. That's uh, lap 89, so we will have one more lap. I did this in the road race the other night, too. I didn't know when the <laughs> end of the race was. You know, one thing about this, Tom, the racing was incredible. And, uh, you know, it's unbelievable, the racing that we had uh, throughout this race, three, four wide, uh, constantly three wide, which, uh, you know, I knew we see some two-ride racing, but here the, the outside line, the third line, 
was really really neat to watch these guys and uh, uh, was some really fantastic racing by a lot of very talented drivers. So don't forget that uh, two weeks from tonight, week seven at uh, Darlington Motor Speedway, these guys will go back at it again, uh, back to the shorter track, about the same size as Phoenix, um, May 5th at 10 p.m. Eastern time. That's, uh, what time is it? 2 a.m. Greenwich Mean Time, I believe, uh, which is the universal iRacing time. Uh, join us here on PSR TV. It should be Nim Cross and myself and Chuck. Uh, once again in the booth for the Darlington race. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. I will have to miss that race. I will not be here for that race. I apologize. But definitely tune in PSR TV at this time next uh, two weeks from tonight for the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship. They changed the name on us again, so I'm still trying to remember it all. Um, tune in for the Darlington race. See if Brad Davies can be the first two-time winner this season. Because if we finish under under yellow, as it appears like we are going to, we will now have our sixth winner in six races. And John Gorlinski will score two uh, second-place finishes in a row. Daryl Earnhardt Jr. will have a fantastic uh, finish for the first time in a while since his victory at uh, uh, in Daytona at the start of the season. Dale uh, actually had to miss a race or two due to obvious commitments. Uh, Lewandowski will actually do very well this time. See some of the uh, some of the drivers who are down in the points that are actually finishing fairly well. Looks like Andrew Fayish the third. will uh, improve his points position quite a bit. Patrick Fogel, who sits third in the championship right now, looks like he is going to finish in ninth. We'll score him about 138 points. So, if you like what you see, uh, definitely go check out iRacing.com. Get signed up. They have a, uh, a, uh, a test a uh, introductory offer that you can check out now one that includes the Talladega track get signed up for the Talladega 499 and the 312 I gotta tell you the yellow flags at the super speedway are just flat boring <laughs> I've completely run out of things to talk about yeah they take a while to go around um, but this this time by, Davies will get the uh, uh, checker flag with John Gorlinski, Dale Jr., and Thomas Landowski and Derek Cash. Derek Cash, um, not not up there all day. Well, actually, he you know he's up there battling pretty hard. Uh, he was but, pushing uh, for a little is, while. Yeah, he's pushing up there. But this is the top. This is where you want to be. The top place for you are all night uh, at the finish. So Derek Cash, doing a good job up there, finishing and getting a good top five. So after probably one of the most exciting races we've had all season. Uh, it looks like Brad Davies is going to be scored the victory here at Talladega. Uh, this 90-lap race has seen some of the best racing action that we've seen all season, certainly the longest green flag action that we've seen all season. And uh, three wide at Talladega, bumping and drafting and uh, guys coming from the back and big wrecks, just as you would see in real life. This is real racing done at home. So... Have a word for our winner, Brad Davies, as he crosses the start-finish stripe to win the NASCAR iRacing.com Series World Championship race here at Talladega. Second place, John Gorlinski for the second race in a row. Dale Earnhardt Jr. in third, Thomas Lewandowski in fourth, and Derek Cash rounds out the top five. In the sixth position is Ray Alfalo. Brian Blackford is in seventh. Andrew Fayesh, the third, is in the eighth spot. Patrick Fogel rounds out the ninth spot, and Theo Olsen is tenth. Uh, Vinny Sansoni is going to really pick up his uh, second to the last place points position now by finishing 11th today. Jacob Adler in 12th, a uh, name we actually hardly said all day long. Robert Hall, uh, the number 27 car who spent most of the day pushing Dale Earnhardt Jr. up on that uh, in that second line. 
finishes 13th, Mike Kelly in 14th, and Brian Schoenberg in 15th. In the 16th spot is Thomas Hazard, 17th Sandeep Banerjee, Florian Goddard is in the 18th spot, Connor McKenzie 19th, and John Prather is in the 20th spot. Uh, Jason Anderson and these guys, I believe, were all wrapped up in that uh, that wreck there on lap 86. Jason Anderson, 21st. Justin Trombley, 22nd. Richard Tower, our points leader. Uh, and, and definitely go check out iRacing.com at the series results and find out where uh, that's going to put Richard Tower. Uh, this is a terrible finish for him in 23rd. Jesse Atchison, 24th. Jordan Hightower in 25th. In the 26th spot is Darren Stevens, who was uh, working that outside line, unfortunately came up a little short there at the end. Daniel Pope, one of the best drafting partners to have out there running in the 27th spot. 28th, Matt Sintel. Uh, Jim Moore, 29th. And Dion Burgers, 30th. And so the, uh, the last runners here, Joel Putty, Jordan Erickson, Chris Main, Tyler Hudson, Josh Berry, Derek Wood, and Josh Parker. All round out our top 37 for this evening's race. Fantastic job by all of these guys. I have to really uh, give it to them. After a few races, I didn't give them a whole lot of faith to uh, not finish with a whole lot of yellow flags, but uh, I was really impressed. This was uh, by far the best race that we've seen all season. Absolutely fantastic job by uh, all these drivers out there running three wide and having a real good fight for the lead. You know, everything we saw is the kind of thing you see in real, uh, real Talladega races that you'll see this upcoming weekend. And uh, even even as far as the wrecks go, you'll see plenty of those too. So definitely check out the iRacing.com results page. Uh, find out how these guys did. Uh, uh, check out the forums. There's a whole section just where these guys sort of talk amongst themselves. The Drivers World Championship. Uh, forum where they sort of discuss, they put their race recaps and see how things go. It was fantastic. So if you're not a member and you think you can uh, work your way up to race some of these guys or really just want to race for fun, go check out iRacing.com. Uh, take a look at the service that they have. It's really fun. I've enjoyed it for the two years I've been involved with it. And uh, I know Nim enjoys working for him. So uh, on behalf of the entire PSR TV crew, uh, Ian Bushing, uh, Chuck Johnson, Nim Cross, uh, the Flying Finn, Ilka Hapala, uh, we will see you in two weeks at Darlington. <laughs>